And we're back to Learning GIMP and this time I'm going to show you how to color an eye on a black and white photo. As an example, I've used a colored photo but it works on an original black and white. Also, I'll just desaturate this one and this is the starting point. I'll create a new layer. I call that eye. It's important that it's transparent. It's on top of the original. Let me switch back to the original and now I use the paths tool right here. Just left click, create something like this. And when you want to close the shape, hold control. You can see how the cursor changes and then left click. So there's a closed shape now. Then you can hover over these lines and make them curved and adjust the angle with the handles right here. It may happen that you misclick here and there. If that happens, for example, for me right here, just press Ctrl Z and then re grab the handle or the line wherever you've misclicked. Once you're happy with the shape, just right click on it, select and use from path. You should see these marching ants. Let me toggle that on so that you can see it here as well. So here they are. Now I use the bucket fill tool. And if I left click on it, or let me press Ctrl Z, you should obviously be on your eye layer and then left click on it. So this is what we've got now. If I make it none and zoom in, you can see the edges are very harsh and you may not want that. So let me press Ctrl Z until I've arrived here. And now I go to select and use feather. The size depends a little bit on the size of a canvas. 5 or 10 pixels fine for me here. And if I now left click on it with the bucket fill tool, you can see it feathers the edges a little bit out and this makes the transition smoother. So it's a good idea to do that before you add the color with the bucket fill tool. Let me use a greenish color. I left click on it again. I'm gonna select none. And now I change the blending mode for this layer right here to soft light. And I go down with the opacity a value of like 30 to maybe 60% should be fine in most cases. And you already know what color you want to use. This is already it. But let's just say you're unsure. You can change the color right here. Left click on it again, but you can also see that we now have this little bit of a green halo because we've added this to the feather selection. So it's a good idea to press Ctrl Z until you've arrived at this point where there is only the black color or where there is no color at all and then add your new color and keep the selection. And now if I change the color time and time again the halo will not be there. So if you don't know what color to use, don't deselect this shape and instead keep it and change the color. And for most images that's fine because you don't zoom that far in. But in this example you can see that the eyelashes they are also green now and we don't want to have that. So depending on the zoom level the viewer sees this and it's going to look unnatural. So add a layer mask with a right click and make it fully white. And you have to be on the layer mask, so not the layer on the layer mask. And use a brush tool, go down with the size, and it's black now. And now I go over these eyelashes one by one. It's a little bit of a tedious task, it takes time. But if you want to have better results, you should definitely do this on top.
One additional tip before I speed this video up. Whenever you mispaint on your layer mask, let me just give you an example. Let's say I've made this area right here uncolored. I don't want to have that. Just flip the color. So right now we've got it black. And we want to have it white now in this area. And then I can bring back some of the colors. So in this case, my greenish color. So you have to balance it out a little bit, play around with the black and white color on your layer mask. And now I'll speed this video up. And now I should be good here. So it's this three part process. Select the eye, recolor it, and then take care of the lashes with the layer mask. And this is how you can color an eye in a black and white photo in GIMP. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.